Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden. Where we continue to follow the capture and killing of Osama bin Laden now. Those are just some of the scenes overnight as thousands of Americans gathered in celebration of Osama bin Laden's death. Former Navy SEAL Rob O'Neill says he has thought about the mission every day since that May Day in 20. From multiple conversations you had with Rob O'Neill over the past year and a half, how did you get And you described that his head kind of exploded yes. when you hit I, him. Yes, I actually hit him three times because I shot him twice when he was standing and once on the ground. That is the fucking American badass. Go, go, go. We are not going for fame and we are not going for bravado. We are going for the single mom who dropped her kids off at elementary school on a Tuesday morning and then 45 minutes later she jumped to her death out of a skyscraper. If you need help, hang up and then dial your operator. I'm Rob O'Neill, and this is the Operator Podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Operator Podcast. Uh, thanks for hanging with me. Um, back by very popular demand, I had to bring my brother Drago back because we talked uh, the last few segments, and so fascinating, so interesting. Um, a way to grow up. I mean, it's almost like listen. It, it's almost like it's not real. It's such a a kick ass story. Uh, just a, a badass um, American coming from socialism to the United States. So uh, we are back with Drago. Um, Drago, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me over and uh, on your podcast. It's an honor, and I I totally enjoy it. I just need to remember. To speak a little bit slower because we're <laughs> or something. I was like, da, 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 da. and then I'm looking at this. What the hell did I just say? When I'm well, the, so the problem too is I'm I get excited and I start talking fast and I've actually taken classes on how to slow down and maintain eye contact. But then I start talking to you and I get all excited, get all fired up, and start telling stories and start yapping. So uh, I get I get excited. You know, I, I'm the guy who invented the accelerated English course for terrorists <laughs> and I was really good. And this is, but now I slowly start understanding why after my five, 10 minutes class, these savages could speak much better and <laughs> could speak sometimes better with better accent that I speak, you know? <laughs> we had a, we had a funny saying, I was also a battlefield interrogator. I'm sorry, a tactical question or whatever. And I, we came up with a joke. Um, what does a cue ball in pool and Al Qaeda have in common? The harder you hit them, the better their English gets. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry. We never hit a we never hit a guy. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we did like the, my, my English my, uh, teaching methods to terrorists was just look mean. You know, you just just look at them and scare them. They, when you look, how mean, did how did you do, the way that we did it? We, uh, especially in Iraq, we did a lot of uh, battlefield interrogation. And what we learned the best way to do was to get the detainee here, put the interpreter behind him, and then you look him in the eyes and speak to him, and the the guy that speaks his language is behind him, so they can't get a rapport. And it's like, no, you're looking at me, you're listening to him. Do you guys do it that way? Is that how you guys did it? I think he froze up there. Hang on. No, no, I, I wouldn't understand a, a, a thing if you say something in Arabic. I couldn't say in Arabic. But with no. my method, the actually guy within 10, 5 minutes was speaking quite comfortable English. So I just took the guy uh, uh, in the class. I, I taught him English, and then we called the uh, the, the interrogators to talk to them because uh, they usually they usually they didn't want to talk at all. They they said that the first answer was no English, no English. Uh -huh. So I was like, wait a minute, give <laughs> five minutes, and he will speak English. Five again. minutes. Yeah, and, I mean, there's 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 a lot of ways to do it. I found too the looking mean thing. I'm sure you had that down to a yeah, science. Almost hundred percent success rate. Yeah, yeah. We I learned um um instead of getting too creative, just ask them basic questions. How many guys are in the house? Who's the man of the house? What are their names? And that's it. And then ask the next guy. You know, four guys say one thing, two guys say the different thing. That's there's your bad guys. Well, with me, he didn't want to talk. I taught him how to talk, and very quickly he spoke. Whatever <laughs> we ask, whatever we ask him. If somebody else was sitting there didn't want to talk. Drago, come here. He needs an English course. And here, after he five, five, an five, English five, course, he spoke English, he spoke English with a better accent than I can say. That's amazing. <laughs> like I said, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways to to peel a terrorist. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 this is I'm going to patent it. Dragos accelerated English course for terrorists, <laughs> and I think this is going to. It's so effective, you know, ten minutes and you speak English really well. That's so, better than Rosetta Stone, man. We you should write a book about that. Just a ten oh, minute. Yeah. It should be Dragos Stone or something like that. I don't know what I name it yet, but I will name it something definitely. I'm 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 on board. I love it. I love it. Um, so. Getting back to the story, where we left off was um, the incredible, I mean, not incredible, I wasn't there, but the prison story, just living in hell so bad, you mentioned the tiger cage, and like your only response was to laugh, because here's a cage inside a cage, um, and you just, and the, how long, now we got into it a little bit, but they kept you in that cage for a few days, or was it a week? Oh, uh, no, that was, I, I had a week, uh, but they put me in transport to uh, political prison, on the Russian border. So we left from uh, Lodz where I was uh, being uh, interrogated. They sent me to prison in the uh, uh, in uh, on the Russian border. Actually, we could see through the bars, uh, the Russians, Russian side. Pretty scary at that time. Oh, yeah. So so now do you know how long you got sentenced? Do they tell you your sentence or just bring you to that? Yeah. Political... No, no, no. no. Yeah. I was told uh, I, I went to court and they told me it's three years prison sentence. Okay. And, uh, then and then the whole time they're just trying to get you to admit that you're a criminal. Yeah. Until that time. Once they sent us me, there was like, you know, you done. And uh, they, 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 they signed me on the last who, yeah, I guess, uh, when I beat up that guy, they, <laughs> they, uh, they put me in that tiger cage. Uh, so, but it was just like supposed to be one week isolation. The, the, you know, I was not laughing because I was so tough. I was just laughing because it was so freaking surreal. It was so unreal that I, was, I look at it and it's like, this is a prison cell. But then you have a cage in the prison cell. I said, what right. the hell is this? If you went there inside it, and uh, you'd be laughing your ass off. I, 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 I couldn't stop laughing. I didn't want to laugh because. No, but the, being but, surreal too. I mean, just even the way you met, I was thinking about this the last few days. And even the way you mentioned, you go in a cell, you lay down, they pull you out, they beat you up, <clears throat> you lay down again, figuring you'll be safe. They beat you. I mean, getting a beating like that is not a, it's not a game. Like that's fucking, you're getting your ass whooped. <clears throat> you lay down, get your ass. I mean, the shit you went through is, I, 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 I can't wrap my mind around it. That's, I mean, it's insanity. What, what the stuff you did in there, then the tiger cage. I mean, I can almost, I can't, I, I've never experienced that, but just you're saying how surreal it is. Like I'm going in a cage inside a cell. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, I, 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 we knew that uh, at that time the atrocities committed by socialist regime, but uh, uh, when I went to this room and I said, seen this cage, like it was like from the from the comedy or something. Just put no, me right. Shit. I'll be sitting in the cage, and then the guards, once every while they walked in, just walk around the cage. They put their their stick on the on the, on those on this little cage, yeah. and just walk out. So I spent I think a day or two, and they sent me in transport. So <laughs> they spent a lot of time. Yeah. Now, what? Um, I I'd, I'd seen some comments on social media because I may have said, uh, or someone might have typed in a Russian gulag. It's what's the difference between a a a prison, a political prison on the border, and a Russian gulag? Because someone said it's not a gulag. It's, it's the same thing, yeah, right? Yeah, no, that they are correct. That technically they are correct. The, the Russian gulags is a is a system of political prison and labor camps in Soviet Union. And this is yeah. abbreviation uh, G, uh, G-U-L-A-G. Yeah. But so in, in Poland, we called it gulags because this is where they kept political prisoners. This is where they kept people with uh, on false charges, uh, a political opponents of socialism. So this is what we were like, well, you know what? This is just like Russian gulag, but in Poland. Yeah. Although we need to remember that the that, that prison system in Poland at the time was modeled on a Soviet Union prison system. The interrogation method, methods were modeled on Soviet uh, uh, yeah. system. And they had also Soviet Russian advisor, advisors working quietly in the background, in the shadows, to uh, and manipulating Polish politics and, uh, and Polish society as well yeah and i mean my my initial thought too because that's years ago but that's that's your life and like with these fucking keyboard warriors i'm like dude he's in the prison he can call it whatever he wants well, like, that's just what we, what we called it in poland yeah, yeah. okay i just want to make it make, make make the point especially even more pissed off 
the socialists and communists in Poland that yeah they're, they're Polish gulags you know but technically yeah. it was just a prison for political prisoners fucking tiger cage man what that's it, it's insane so <clears throat> so they they gave you the three year sentence what what's a what's a normal day in the that three year sentence so uh, initially in the prison. Uh, when I was uh, I, first, I was detained in the headquarters of the secret police. Then they moved me to like intermediate prison. That whenever they they did with me whatever they needed to do, they put me time like a holding tank, uh, and uh, and I was just sitting there waiting for them to complete the uh, uh, case, my case. And once it was completed, then uh, they drove me to a military court. It was a military court and. Uh, they sent us me, they drove me back, and then I got this incident uh, uh, with this other guy and uh, got that tiger cage. And from the tiger cage, my time came to be moved to uh, the gulag, uh, the prison for yeah, political prisoners. In for, Poland, yeah. called it gulag because fucking Polish gulag. Yeah. Same, same purpose, just different uh, yeah. methods. So. So you do the three years, and then did they just let you out? Did they, how does that go? Uh, well, this is what happened: is John Paul II was coming to Poland for the second time. Okay. And the condition that, that at that time, uh, communists and a socialist regime were losing control more and more. So they were hoping they bring the Pope to come down the society, and uh, uh, but the condition uh, the Pope set for his visit was to release political prisoners. And uh, so then the communists decide to make amnesty for political prisoners. I was one of them released. Uh, slowly, they were, didn't release everybody. They were just listen, uh, listening a few people at the time, few people here, few people there. Because please remember, these prisoners were, we were kept all over the Poland. They were political prisoners, uh, prisons uh, all over the Poland. Some of those prisons were turned from uh, from uh, from even the recreational units, well, mostly they, they were from uh, recreational centers. They were uh, they, this is where they kept people who did not commit any crime. They were just potentially dangerous to society, to socialist regime. So prevent just for the prevention, they put them there and just kept them there, just like in prison. They were pretty much prison, but prisons in Poland for political prisoners were all over the Poland. They were everywhere. Yeah. But the, so the the Pope, the Catholic Church, had a lot to do with getting political it, prisoners out. Yes, and it was different Pope that we have today. That's yeah, for sure. Pope John Paul. Yeah, it, it, well, different ideologies too. Because I think, uh, I like, think, yeah, I think our Pope now is he's a little more political than on the on the left side as opposed to the right side. But sometimes you have you you, you question this whole thing up there. Uh, at, at least I do. This is not the Pope. I am. Um, I, I used to be when I was growing up in Poland and later in America. This is something new with with a lot of ideology being pushed on society. So when he came in, uh, they started releasing us. And that was not for us political prisoners and political opponents of socialism. That was not over. There were people like there was a guy I was sitting in the cell with, young kid, 21 years old. He was found hanged. Um, there was quite a few people that didn't show up uh, to work, and then nobody know where they are. Oh, he where didn't. They... He didn't. He didn't commit suicide. He was just they killed him. I believe so. Yeah, there was that was one of the normal tactics. Uh, the the suiciding people was uh, kind of uh, a favor uh, a favorable technique of removing political opponents in Poland. So and... yeah, so I I don't believe that he hanged himself. No, uh, I don't want to bring his name out of the respect to his family. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but it, yeah, that's that's the case. I know personally. So what happened to me when I was released? First, I couldn't find the job. I was like everywhere I went, it's like no, we don't have a job for you. And some of the some of the locations, some of those places were very adamant about it. You are political. You are political prisoner. You are not not political prisoner. They come. You are criminal. We don't have a job for you. You were sent. I'm not. I was trying to argue sometimes. I'm not a criminal. I was political prisoners. I yeah. didn't commit any crime. Well, but by the book says you did commit the crime. So if you commit the crime, you uh, we don't we don't want you here. So I couldn't find the job. But also the other things that they like to do, the communist regime, the socialist regime, and communists like to do is 
uh, they were good in kidnapping people. So mm -hmm. <laughs> very often I was coming out, I was doing kickboxing, taekwondo at the time. So sometimes at night or in the evenings after we work almost three, four hours a day sometimes. So late at night where we were coming home, just walking because in Poland, like none of us had a car. We had to mm -hmm. wait for us and going to the bus. Sometimes was hanging out a little bit with the guys. The police showed up, the, the civilian car pulled to the curb. They just grabbed me, handcuffed me, threw me inside and just drove away. <laughs> the, all my friends knew what was this about. There's nothing they could do at the time. So they just drove me around the town, drove me in, inside the woods, then outside the woods, go to another small town, then go back. And uh, I remember I asked uh, every single time, where are we going? Why I'm here? Mm -hmm. Where are we going? It will literally matter. It will matter to you when we get there. That is really that is so chilling. You mentioned that before. That, yeah. and that just, I mean, you, I mean, the I, I don't care who you are. The fear's got to come out of you. The adrenaline's got to be pumping. Like it if this could be it. I might be cuffed, but I can maybe kick and run. Or this yeah. is it. It did. You know, I'm a seal now, but before I was just a kid. I yeah. didn't know. So I remember I was about to pee myself a couple of times when we were yeah. just put to the woods. So my in my mind, it was already working on the different gears. And I was thinking, I'm going to kick this guy, kick that guy, see how I can knock them out. I would just run as fast as I can. So they're going to kill me anyway. So at yeah, least might I might as well fight it I'll out. Fight it out. And uh, it didn't happen, of course. They just drove, it, they drove me back usually to the outskirts of our town. They, just kick me out, throw me away. And and uh, then I had to walk because it was late night. The buses were not working anymore. No, they were not, not riding. So I had to walk home for sometimes maybe three, four, five miles at night. And um, so that was, it happened quite a few times. Mm -hmm. I decide that it's time to to leave because one day I will not come back from one of these. Yeah, places. they're going to, they're going to, you're going to find yourself commit suicide in the trees that you didn't do yourself pull a, pull a jeffrey epstein <laughs> like he, he, he committed yeah. suicide <laughs> yeah yeah so okay so you, you decide you're going to leave what, what's the first steps to that first time i went to u.s embassy i mean for me america was always that beacon of freedom there was always i, I remember when i was living with my father for uh, that year before i got kicked out of uh, of his house uh I, I was, I like to go to front of U.S. Embassy and they had always these powerful, big cars, you know, that was like 70s, right? 70s, uh, before the 80s. So when I was there, 76, 77. So uh, I like to read about America and then just, and I'm thinking like, this is so awesome. How lucky these people are. Why Poland cannot be like that? Because okay. of communist and socialist goons are ruining not only our economy but also our freedom they 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 steal freedom from everybody and they have to because otherwise nobody would vote for these goons i mean this is why all the elections were rigged so this is how i knew america and uh, i read what, about what, did, what could you uh, in so 1978 what can what were you reading about america cuz i know everything's censored what was what were, you would see the the cars but what would you uh, what were in the in the books or magazines i was reading about the the freedom this is what i was eating the most that people can have their own businesses they can have the job they want they can go to college and don't have to worry about having extra points uh, for, from Communist Party to to be in college, like in Poland. If you didn't belong to some uh, either socialist uh, uh, youth uh, organization, there was like social uh, uh, socialist youth organization, that's how they call it, or Communist Party, you pretty much didn't have much chance to get uh, higher education. You were pretty much like that at the middle level. So I was reading this, how it is possible. Everybody in America can have a job they want. They can study in colleges wherever they want. They can live however they want. They can have their own homes. They can move from place to place wherever they want to move. So for me, there was like fairy tale and never ever even crossed my mind that I could ever had a chance to live in place like this. There was like reading about Snow White and and, and other <laughs> films, 
you love it you know you, you kind of you, you like it but you know you will never be a part of it and that, that changed I, at that time i didn't have anything to to, to uh, I, I was on the end of i was on the, on the end of my rope so I, I went to u.s embassy and i asked for help i just, i was thinking like what else can what can yeah. i look so uh so I, I i tried to start my life again after prison and i could not i was not allowed to so they uh so i went to place that i knew is a is the freest place in the world and uh and i was accepted and so that you went to the embassy and how, how long was that process to 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 tell them you're, uh, you want to be Usually it takes from like six to uh, eight months at the time, yeah. or even longer. But in my case, I think it was maybe a month, month and a half when I had the documentation stating that I, I am allowed to settle in the United States as a political refugee. When I came to America, my status was political refugee. So I went to, I, I, that was fairly quick. In, in So yeah. once, before that, uh, before I got that, I had to still finish some complete some paperwork on the Polish side, especially with Polish military. <laughs> they hated it. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine that because they they got a. They, I would assume they're giving you as much pushback as they possibly can. Just, just for to... the it. They, they didn't want me in Poland. They just they just want to torment me as much as they could. It's typical for socialist uh, elites there in Poland. They they. That was hell to pay. <laughs> if you if you if you if you did something against socialism, uh, people were dying. Yeah. Now now uh, do they? What year is this? You you went to the embassy. What, what about nineteen eighty four? Uh, what's that? Uh, what year did you go to the embassy to start your paper? Nineteen eighty three. Nineteen eighty three. So end of, end of nineteen eighty three. Do these uh, uh, communist secret police? Do they even see the end coming? Like, are they are they trying to stop it because like the the dam's about to burst? They know it's coming. Just uh, with the uh, with the pope they and with it. the they know it. They were they were just doing everything to push as many people outside as pa as possible to push all the opposition that, to social outside of Polish border. They were happy about it, but you know, typical to socialism and communism, they like to torment people. Yeah. They don't. Just, they don't want you just to live and be happy. They want you to live in fear that you always remember, hey, do not mess with socialism. And uh, that's very, uh, very unpleasant. But yeah. I was, oh, yeah, yeah. So I went, I was given the the promise that I will have the uh, uh, immigration or visa. Then I went to a uh, military office where I supposed to be, uh, uh, where I supposed to be, uh, uh, the rest was to give documents if I'm not if I am if army if Polish army does not need me, and of course they didn't, but they still tried to give me a hell. I remember when I walked into the office, a major was sitting at the desk. He looked at me, oh, with such a disgust, and uh, he he uh, he says to me, "People, young guys, young people, young people like you should be serving under." This Polish eagle up there, you know, it's, you know yeah. he's to this uh, Polish symbol uh, hanging above his head, and that wasn't Polish symbol even because that was that was eagle, but with with without the crown. Polish symbol is eagle, white eagle with the crown, but it was very offensive to communists, so they removed the crown. That the, so the socialism that, that there are no royalties, so they removed the crown. And uh, so I told him, like, you know, that f f uh, first thing, that eagle of yours is not Polish eagle. He doesn't have a crown. The Bolsheviks and, and, and communists and socialists, they stole the crown. Uh, and by the way, they even kidnapped the Polish eagle and sent him on to Siberia. But I would not want to be in your shoes when this eagle with crown on his head <laughs> comes back to Poland. I don't want to be in your shoes and your Marxist communist lackeys because it's not going to end up well for you. And it didn't. It, no, it, it didn't. Right. I mean, it, right. <laughs> I did a, um, 
a bit uh, a couple months ago about in Romania, uh, Nikolai and Elena Ceausescu, is that how I said it? Yeah, Nikolai and, Ceausescu. And they, they, they were barking orders all the way up to their execution. Like yes. they didn't, it didn't sink in. They're like, hey, they're the... The 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 freedom fight the actual freedom fighters are here and you're you're gonna die. The only thing that you can request is to die together, which they did. Um, but yeah. it's almost like they don't get it. Like this this communism is gonna work until the end, and then when the people finally get there, I mean, that, and that's what we said. That you know you can vote your way into socialism, but you're gonna shoot your way out. On the heels of the second largest bank failure in U.S. history and the eighth interest rate hike within a 12 month period. 186 more banks are at risk of collapsing. Your bank could be next unless the Fed does what they just did back in March and print $300 billion out of thin air, making your dollar worthless. Not to mention the recession risk that could have a significant impact on your investment and retirement accounts. Take my advice. Protect your financial future with something real. Gold and silver from my friends at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver, or if you prefer... Have it delivered securely right to your front door. Since the beginning of time, there has been only one universal currency that is always of value, and that is gold. Allegiance Gold has some of the highest ratings in the industry. Five stars with TrustLink, a AAA rating with the Business Consumer Alliance, and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. You can invest with confidence because of the quality and service of Allegiance Gold. Get up to $5,000 in free silver on a qualifying purchase when you visit protectwiththeoperator.com today or give them a call at 844-790-9191. Don't let the Fed play Monopoly with your money. Protect your future with Allegiance Gold. Visit protectwiththeoperator.com or give them a call at 844-790-9191. Now, you've heard me mention Moink before, and I know, I know we all like to eat. I love to eat. Did you know... 60% of U.S. pork production comes from one company owned by China, and their hogs are given something called ractopamine, which is banned in 160 countries, including China, yet you find it in your grocery aisle every single day. There's a better way, so I'm going to remind you of Moink. That is moo plus oink. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork and chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. Moink farmers farm like our grandparents did, and as a result, Moink meat tastes like it should because the family farm just simply does it better. The Moink difference is the difference you can taste, and you can feel good knowing you're helping family farms stay financially independent too. You choose the meat to be delivered in every box like ribeyes, chicken breasts, pork chops, salmon fillets, and much more. Plus, you can cancel anytime. I love Moink I, so much, I actually sent it to my family in Montana. They love it up there. Uh, Shark Tank host Kevin O'Leary called Moink's bacon the best bacon he's ever tasted. He's not lying. It's the best bacon I've ever tasted. Ring doorbell founder Jamie Simonoff jumped at the chance to invest in Moink. Plus, my favorite part, as you can say, oink, oink, I just got moinked. I do love it. You'll love it, too. Seriously, try it. A box of meat. You pick what you want. It's great. And keep uh, American farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash the operator right now. And listeners of this show will get free bacon in your first box. This is the best bacon you'll ever try. I'm not even kidding, but it's for a limited time. It's spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash the operator. That's moinkbox.com slash the operator and get some of that bacon. Anyone who thinks they won't need emergency food isn't paying attention. Every day the headlines seem to get worse and worse. Is the unthinkable next? It pays to prepare. That's why I seriously recommend you stock up on emergency food right away. You never know when the next shoe will drop. And when it does, emergency food will be hard to find. So get yours now while it's on sale. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com and check out their popular three-month emergency food kit. Right now, you'll save $200 per kit. Each kit gives you a wide variety of delicious breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, snacks, providing over 2,000 calories a day for optimum strength and energy. Act now and claim your $200 savings per kit. You'll sleep better knowing your family won't suffer if the worst ever happens. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com and you'll enjoy free shipping too. MyPatriotSupply.com So now that I'm getting into the interview parts of 
The Operator podcast. One thing a lot of us had in common was dipping tobacco. It's a culture in the military. Get up early to have a dip, dip after every meal, dip after every jump, during runs in the kill house, dipping on the range, during briefs, while giving briefs if you're enlisted. Uh, but I wanted to get away from tobacco, and um, I found an alternative. If you're a current dipper and 21 years old or up, you should give black buffalo a try. It's the same ritual without the tobacco. There's no tobacco, leaf, or stem. It's made out of edible green leaves. There is pharmaceutical-grade nicotine in some. There's also nicotine-free versions. But again, their food-grade ingredients is just the ritual. It's the same texture, the same feel. We got it in straight. We got it in pouches. There's flavors, mint, winter green, like I said, straight, peach, blood orange. Um, you're getting the same feeling, the same ritual but without the tobacco. So like I said, give it a try if you're a dipper at blackbuffalo.com and use code THEOPERATOR for 15% off your first purchase. That's blackbuffalo.com. Dot com, born in the Midwest, raised in the South, blackbuffalo.com. And it's amazing to me that, that we're seeing a lot of this now where they're saying, well, let the government take care of us and we'll do this and you can get free this and all that. And it's always under, uh, it was in your book, it said, uh, a better world for humanity. And that's how it starts. And it sounds, it, and it doesn't sound great, just free stuff. It never works out that way, but there's always someone with a better way to do it and it never works. And, the, and, and just to listen to you talk about, a, a fairy tale is being able to move when I want uh, my own car education. Like that's, and these are, these are rights in the United States that basically a lot of people take advantage of and they take it for granted because they were born here and not realizing how lucky they are to be born here. Well, this is something that the, uh, you, I, you are, you are absolutely right about it. And with the communism, like my, uh, like my father used to say, we are. We just want to make a great thing for humanity, and the mantra of communists was always, "We're gonna. We want to make the great thing for the uh, for the for for Polish uh, society, and we are so great. We do this. We do this. They promised you everything. Yeah. They they didn't deliver it, but they what they were trying to do is divide the society on the richer people or the poorer people. Everybody was. Everybody. Well, that's that's uh, that's one of the tactics is div divide yeah. people, divide people first. And yeah. you can even see that here. I, I firmly believe that here in the United States, the reason that a lot of these higher ups are there, they say Asian American, African American, Irish American, Polish American, because they don't want to say American. They, they, if we can do, divide and conquer is not just a, a, a kick ass Che Guevara T-shirt. It, it, it's a real tactic that's really being used. It is very disturbing to me because you, know, you learn just like I learned in the Navy. In America, we have we are all one color. It is red, white, and blue. Yeah. There's no this color, that color. I mean, what, what do I tell my wife who has a darker skin than I do? What I call her? I call her darky? She is <laughs> she's American. I'm I'm American. I yeah. don't care. You know, like we were when we were fighting uh, wars uh, on behalf of America. It never crossed our mind that we are no. made, want to fight for this group or that group. No. We fought for every American. And yeah. I understand that sometimes people say, well, we didn't need to fight that war. We didn't need to fight that war. So you are war criminal. You are this. Well, people need to remember that we don't start the wars. If they don't want the war, they maybe should vote better politician in the office. Because I think that's the problem. The, the military us we are not warmongers because we know that we can die in that war but if it time if it comes to uh if the war comes we will fight on behalf of america to our last breath yeah and it doesn't matter what what the guy the man or woman next to you looks like we're americans well i mean even right now the thing that pisses me off is watching uh, like the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Mark Milley, saying he wants to understand white rage. He doesn't know what it is. That That's not part of the military. The reason when you get to the, the first day in the Army or the Navy, they shave your head and they put you in the same uniform because you're all the same. And you're well, at first, you're all you're all equally scumbags and maybe you'll get up here. But that's the whole point. That's the reason I heard a Marine Corps general the other day explain why he says, you know why um, the ribbons are a quarter inch this way and that way? Because it's attention to detail because you're all uniform. And that's what everyone is. I never cared. Like even when I was getting out um, in 2012, 
And the big thing was repealing don't ask, don't tell. And I'm sitting in a room full of Navy SEALs. And I said, <clears throat> knowing damn well, a couple of them are probably gay. I'm like, does anybody care if anyone's gay? All I care about is if I get shot, can you carry me with all my gear on? That's it. This is like I said earlier, you know, for me, if you are an American, I die for you defending your rights and to be whoever you are able to be to and to live the lifestyle that you want to live. This is America. We are free men. So I don't know why these divisions are being created. You say wide rage. That was still, and remember, and the wide rage when we were in military, who no. created it? Is this General Mali creating wide rages and, and, and things are getting out of control under his hand? Well, we know he fled Afghanistan in such a hurry that he left thousands of our citizens and allies citizens in the hands of Taliban. They are still there. They are still waiting for help. So for me, it is utter disgrace. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's again, it's politics, and you got to at a certain level, be it um, uh, officer, senior, enlisted, congressman, or senator, you need to toll the party line if you want to keep your power, personal power. And again, that comes back to the the reason I think that socialism works because they they, they like their power, they're going to keep it, and they don't give a damn about the people below them. And we're seeing it just seep its way into the military. There, there, you know, we're wasting a lot of time right now on training that doesn't need to be done when we should have guys in the weight room working out and at the range. Uh, but there, but you you have to do all the sensitivity and command climate training and make sure this is up to date before we send you overseas. It's like, Hey, China's building the Navy, man. They're building islands. We, we should be getting ready for an amphibious war. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, yes. I'm observing it too. And I just scratching my head. How will we fight the war? If, well, if the good it, news is th they're building some major super carriers, and I believe in the U.S. Navy, and we and we'll always have the Marine Corps. So that's you know that's how I go to sleep at night. That and like two Ambien and a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> so, believe, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so the, so the embassy approves um, refugee status, yeah. and then how do you get to the states? Yes, so I'm going to. I completed all the paperwork. Brought that brought brought my paperwork to U.S. Embassy. They reviewed it. And I was given a visa, a immigration visa, uh, and status political refugee. So at first, I was uh, I had to fly to Germany. There was like a little center where we stay, and uh, we're waiting for place to go to come to America. And then in meantime, also we were taught about America. We were taught what, how to live, how to be good. Uh, 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 a resident and eventually a citizen if you if you wish to nobody to ask us or make us hey you know if you go to america you will have to become a citizen you will have to do this what can you do for america when you when you go up there all i was asked is when you go there you can become american citizen you can be just like us but first you need to you know, show that you are a, a yeah. good person. And also, you. we ask you to respect our laws, our our fellow citizens, and respect the, the country, respect America. And this is where, you know, when I was thinking about that, I say, I will become the best citizen, American citizen, America can have. That just, I mean, that's just patriotic, right? That gave me goosebumps. That's uh, that. I mean, especially now watching how op open our borders are and the lack of respect because people come here and they just expect free shit. The way that you said that, like, I'm going to be the best American I can. That's a, I was even talking to my wife, Jessica, today, talking about how uh, some of Drago's story, he never struck me as a bully. And, the, and he's like, you could have been and you were before, but because of the love of the country, you're just going to be a good. That's the whole, my, I'm wrapping my mind around this and I'm probably starting to talk fast again because I'm getting all excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so then how, how did you get, how do you, how do you get here? What do you, what do, they, do they send you over? Do you buy a ticket? Do you get in a boat? Uh, no, I got the, I got to Germany to that center and i was flown out i think the, the the ticket was bought for me but let me make sure the, the, the yeah. there. you mentioned something about the, our southern borders I, I need to address that because it really concerns me uh stalin made big huge mistake when he was trying to colonize uh, uh the uh, neighboring republics and neighboring countries so he 
did it by terror, by pure terror. But he didn't have computers. He didn't have. He didn't know the social science. Now, if 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 he instead of the terror, uh, or terror and add to it the influx of people who have no loyalty to the country, there, if he would flood Poland, East Germany, Czechoslovakia with Russians or with other citizens or with other people who have no loyalty to these countries. Most likely, he would want. They would. They would not be any more Poland, uh, Czechs, Slovakia, or is or, or at that time it was East Germany. So that he made mistake that he used the terror only instead of just dumping people and diluting the patriotism of these countries. So that's that's concerns me. But okay, so I came to Germany. In, in, we had the classes in, up there like how to live in America, what to expect. Uh, uh, some of the classes were done by Polish people, uh, U.S. citizens, but of Polish descent who lived in America. The State Department came in and talked to us and explaining us about life. I was just, I was eating it up. I was like, oh, yeah. Are you really coming to America? Like, really coming <laughs> the fairy to America. tale is about to come true. That's got to be exciting. That's, That's got to oh, be crazy. Yeah. You're going to a whole new world. Yes, yes. So I remember uh, after I think like three weeks, maybe four weeks, I was told that, uh, okay, we have a location for you, but do you have any preferences where to go? And we can, we can change it. We can, we can, we can try to accommodate your preferences. So I was like, I don't know anything. Maybe if you could, I would really please, please, please somewhere where it's hot. It was like hot, <laughs> hot, hot. Because I was like so living hot. in the Polish winters. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah I mean, it's like it's not even having warm clothes. It was really pain in the ass. So I, yeah, just, I, I saw the story in your book where you said uh, you had the light coat, but your your mother would stuff newspaper in it to get for insulation. Yeah, newspapers and uh, all kinds of stuff that to make it warmer because we couldn't buy new uh, new clothes. Actually, she was so th in such a despair. She sent my younger sister to maybe she could uh, change my father's mind and maybe father would buy us the coats. But his answer was very short. That's your mother's responsibility. I'm not going to pay any more alimonies and I'm not going to buy you anything. I'm not, I'm not going to buy you coats or anything. So that's that's my final answer. And please don't ask me anymore about it. So uh, my sister cried. My mom cried. I got mad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I imagine I got mad. And so, so that yeah, so the yeah, and the Polish winter, I I'm assuming is no joke. That's got to be cold. It is cold. I mean, there was sometimes snowing in May, so that was really cold. Uh -huh. I remember. So, 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 so good, good. Uh, so that was it was very cold. It was cold for me, maybe because I didn't have warm clothes. So that was cold. Yeah, that that'll have but something then, to do with when it. When somebody asked me where I would like to settle down in America, I was like. Holy smoke! They they are such a nice people. They not only let me come and live am, among them, they ask me what I would prefer to live. <laughs> they, what is this? So I said like that. I need a hot somewhere place where it's hot. There is a little winter and stuff. So like, how about Memphis, Tennessee? I was like Memphis, Tennessee. I don't know much about Memphis, Tennessee. I know Elvis Presley was born there, but uh, <laughs> is it hot up there? They say, oh yes, it is hot. I say, Sign me up. <laughs> so they, so, they, so you, you picked Memphis because it's hot, and then uh, so then then what? They flew me to New York. To, I mean, through New York. So, what was that like flying? In, could you see out the window in to New York? Uh, that was pretty cloudy. I didn't see a lot, but uh, but I was so excited. I wanted to see the Statue of Liberty. Oh that, no, kidding! That's awesome. That's the iconic uh, 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 monument. Yeah, yeah. That is that is quite a welcoming. Yeah, so we landed. There were people already waiting for me with the signs. I was like, how is this possible? You know, what a country. I mean, in Poland, I was getting kicks left and right. And here, suddenly, you know, like people are welcoming me and they don't even know who I am. So they, 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 they picked me up at the airport, put me in the hotel. They fed me. And they flew me to Memphis, where the already families and church was waiting for me, and uh, that was unbelievable, you know. And I didn't even speak English by the time. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you that. Yeah, when I landed in New York, I already spent all the twenty-five dollars I had on 
tape recorder. I wanted to like, for me, it was very small and it was such a, such a tempting I couldn't resist. I just bought the tape recorder so I can listen to the music. <laughs> I can <laughs> record my own music. What, so, did you, what, what did you think of the, uh, the hotel room? Well, I, I say if I, if, if I had a place like this, I could leave it. I could spend the rest of my life living in that place. <laughs> and and not for nothing, but hotel rooms in New York are not that big. Well, that was big for me. <laughs> I know. I, I'm just. I know. I'm just trying. I'm trying. I'm seriously mind boggled here because uh, going from the. I mean, you were explaining earlier that it, it was a treat to get bread with sugar, and there's yeah. you know, you, uh, and then to be in New York, and just the dream of America and, and, and just the, the, I think it's so cool. Just the respect you already had for America. You're in awe of it, but just the respect you get there and just the, the everything from the tape recorder to the family, welcoming you to the hotel room. And then I was going to ask you, so your English wasn't any good then, huh? Oh, no, no I, I couldn't say, I, I, I couldn't say thank you because even because I didn't know how to say it, how to pronounce it. I know in Poland you would pronounce thank you. TH, you pronounce every letter. So that's like how thank the, you. The the TH sound that's yeah. not the best in Polish language. And I get myself a lot of problem, but a, a big world of shit because of that, that my poor pronunciation. It is still there. I still have a problems with it, as you can see from the last podcast where I was chastised for my English. So I'm trying to speak slower now. No, you're no, it's great. We were just both excited. We're good, man. I think yeah, I think we yeah. got this English shit down to a science. But, but I'm laughing with the guys because when I was listening to myself, and I was like, "What the hell did I just say? I cannot even understand myself." But, but, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm trying to speak a little bit slower, but still. Right. Sometimes when I, I can understand you, but I spent a lot of time with you too. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. You remember in the platoon, like when I show up in, in New Platoon, it was like, what the fuck he just say? I don't even I don't understand this guy. Like two weeks later, there was like, oh yeah, no problem. What the <laughs> they were like translating to me for me to for other people who may not understand. I, I rem I ran into you one of my first days at SEAL Team Two, and you just got back from Sarajevo, and I heard you yelling. It's not at someone, but like you're yelling down the thing, and I'm like, I'm at SEAL Team. I'm like, oh my god, what fucking language do they speak at SEAL Team Two? <laughs> <laughs> well, so when, when I had my first words on, on quarter deck. Of CL team two one. Oh shit! Yes. <laughs> so hey, uh, uh, Drago, please uh, call Petty Officer Smith to on the quarter deck. Somebody's waiting. For me. <laughs> so okay, I'm sorry. Like right. <laughs> uh, Petty Officer Smith, your presence is requested on quarter deck. <laughs> I can hear door slams open everywhere. The massive <laughs> comes exo comes out. CEO is like, what the fuck are you? Are you making fun of? They're making. Do they think this is funny? I was like. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, I remember the court, the quarter deck at Team Two because you got the the Master Chiefs off to your left, the X on the C R, and on that hallway yeah, to the right. Yeah, so and no, yeah, and I, I, yeah, just just the shenanigans that would go on with team guys with the one MC. I think one time uh, one of the guys said, "Attention, the SEAL Team Two area. The Roach Coach has made its approach," which you don't say about the <laughs> Navy Chiefs. Oh, yeah, and yeah. you just hear the door like computers slamming and XOs yelling. It's like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, so I remember they came out. They, they, I think Master she was cussing like, "What the fuck?" I was like, <laughs> I, "I'm so sorry. I get better." It's <laughs> like, "Oh, you speak like that?" I was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> Don't put me in the tiger cage, Master <laughs> Chief. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I was sitting at home and trying to improve my pronunciation. Uh, 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 whenever I went, I was like, especially that phrase. Petty officer son, so your presence is requested. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say like thousands of times. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it, it's anyway, it's a good one. So, so sorry. So, so your English, you, you, now they they bring you to Memphis. Or you're staying with the family, or you just got your yes. own place? So they tried to find a place and work for me. The church. So they placed me with the family first, and uh, I've even even before that, you already learned to say that thank you because the one of the Polish yeah, guys yeah. there explained to me that if you say F, like Foxtrot, if you say F very quick, like, thank you, thank you right. so much, they won't even notice. And that just, so just say that and don't worry about the TH. I say, that okay. word, that's a good, Got that's it. good, man. Well, not for me. It didn't work out for me. <laughs> because, uh, what happened is with the gathering, that was, I think it was other church, with the, I went to other church, they want parishioners to meet me, to just see this new immigrant from Poland. 
So after the mass on Sunday, they uh, uh, they invite us to like a bigger place, like a cafeteria, and the, the priest, the the pastor, came out with a big plate of cookies. You know, I love cookies. I yes, love, that, we're going to get into that. I, I yeah, don't do. There's a lot of things you don't do. Don't get in between Drago and cookies or cakes. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I've seen. I've heard. I've heard stories of you impersonating a general to get better cookies. <laughs> Yes, that was Sarajevo. I was General yeah. Duran at the time. General right. Duran, and I'm here for the cake. <laughs> I'm here to save the. I'm here to save the continent and the cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we we gathered all these people gathered around me. You know, it's like everybody's smiling. The pastor came out with his cookies, so I just grabbed the cookie. You know, it's like <laughs> like I said, and this guy who was teaching me is like. F yeah, oh boy. Like, Fuck you. <laughs> and and I already knew that something was wrong. It was like yeah. wait a minute. What did I just say? I was just thinking in forward, like what did I just say? <laughs> Every I can hear a gasp and those people are like quiet. I was like, that's not good. In fact, all the gentleman <laughs> came out, like put his hand on my shoulder and say, and look around, say, what he's trying to say <laughs> is that he looks at me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was like shaking my head. I was getting concussion from it. But uh, I think people understood. That's a kind of well. Laugh. I would hope so. It's yeah. It's like uh, wow. This crazy prisoner from Poland just came here to stole all the priest cookies. Told him to go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of came out, you know. But but I mean, I think I, I think I gotta give you a break at this point. You just got oh, there. They did. They did. They, they, That's they, funny. They bought me a dictionary. Actually, uh, let me go if I can show it. I, sh I brought it with me here. This is the. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can show it. Uh, oh, no kidding. Dictionary. I still have it. They bought it to me. It was Polish, English, English, Polish. So I was staying with that family. That family actually got me that dictionary. And that's and, the one. And, yeah, that's the one. That's that's the. So or, or, hold, or, hold, holding up the actual dictionary you learned English. That's crazy. That's awesome. That is so cool. Yep. Yeah. So as we drive, uh, so they took me sometimes on the like drive around Memphis to show me around neighborhoods and all that stuff. And as we drive, I wanted to impress them that I'm learning English. I'm trying my best. So every time we go, you know, it's like uh, I see a tree. So I'm just looking in this dictionary. This is a tree. They're like, yeah, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So this is a house. Yeah. This is a, a a sidewalk. Yeah. You know, this is also they are cheering me up. I'm sitting on the back seat. And the the the, the older gentleman from church and his wife, so, you know, that's all cheering me up. And I see women say, like, this is woman. Yes. And then and then uh, I, I see a black guy. And oh, I no. just I look at black guy. I just opened my dictionary, and I was looking, 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 and this is hmm. Uh -oh. <laughs> and and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare even to repeat this because it's no. it's ugly and it's uh, offensive to me as well. But I didn't know any better. I just find a dictionary. Well, I think yeah, too. Which I mean, uh, uh, the the. Lost in translation, too. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine trying to go live over in Eastern Europe and just automatically speak the language. And, and it's, uh, it's that. Yeah, that's I, a. I was just trying to impress them. And, and you know, that's what actually it is in this dictionary. This is why I is it. Yeah, that's and that's great. Yeah, that's and that's a uh, yeah, obviously a place we cannot go ever. Oh, my God. They, they almost wrecked the car. I mean, they yeah. both jump. I should like. Yeah, someone needs to talk to the publisher of that book if they're still around and say you that's not right. <laughs> no, no, this is they they corrected it now. This this thing is not no no longer <laughs> yeah. that word is there. So that was the only word there. So that now, was, was there was there um was there uh Polish speakers in the house with you or did they, they have some around you so the they times, could at the times yes, but like were they driving me around just to show me pointing me things, they were saying to me things which I didn't understand what, but I just like to look. I like to, the, the view. I say, there's so many in Poland. The architecture is mostly like, I don't know, 15, 20 story build, gray buildings where you have like apartments uh, and, and people live there. It's pretty ugly at the time. So they were driving me around these nice neighborhoods. 
and uh, and showing me around. And I just, I loved it. I just, I, I really liked it. But anyway, but w- when I showed them in the dictionary, what I, why I say this, because I know that she was like, I'm so upset. He was upset. So she took this and I have it too here on the page. Oh, did she make well, a note for you? She, she scratched that word. She crossed it over and wrote black man. And I, I, I never said that word again, but uh, that was, that was my, you know, pitfalls with English and with uh, with the new new society, new way of living, being a free man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this not only that, you know, I I had these 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 mishaps quite often. Not not, not with English, even with. Well, yeah, I mean, people got to understand that too. Like, I, I like one of the first things I would do when I got to different countries is ask them how to say the most offensive shit ever, and I could. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I mean, we had you know. We, we had we had when I was in high school, Brazilian exchange students come up and the entire uh, student chairing section was chanting the most rude shit in, in Portuguese. But no one knew what they were saying. So it's like <laughs> you got to, you know, get, get, give me a year before I realize what an asshole I am. <laughs> so, no, uh, the, the, the American citizens who took care of me, they were very understanding. Like cool. I was invited by the church to swimming pool, the swimming pool party. So that for my first one. So I'm like, yeah, a swimming pool. How is this possible? Somebody has, has a house and there's not communal swimming pool, but this is just private swimming pool. How can that be? But wow, yeah. So I wanted to impress everybody. I just picked the best swimming trunks I had. Swimming trunks in Poland, it was the smaller, the better, like banana hammock. Right. I had no idea. So <laughs> it would be like family party for, for the church families and stuff. So I went to I changed my clothes. When I walked up, I can I can already see just like with this effort, uh, something is wrong. I, I see people just <laughs> chasing kids out of the pool and just usher them around to the them, to the pool. <laughs> they, they kind of like uh-huh. hey, you know you like, you need to come with us. And here here comes Drago and his big Polish nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was like a just like so tiny, so small. That's, <laughs> Barely cover what? my balls, you know. But it was wait, wait, no, I was. That's a good. That's a good segue because, how much swimming had you done before? Not really much, but you know, on the beaches in Poland at the time, the smaller the smaller uh, swimming trunks you had, the the, the more. I think no, I no, I I know I'm aware of that. I'm just thinking you got. I mean, you don't know it yet, but you got seal training coming up. You're going to get in the water a lot. Well, I didn't know about this. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just saying. No, because I was because I'm always talking about how I didn't know how to swim uh, right before I joined the Navy. But I'm just from Montana. I'm like, shit, you did the same thing. And I don't think you knew how to swim either. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't even see the ocean in, I, in my life. So until I went to Bath. So. So anyway, right, so, yeah, so get back to Memphis. Be like a big shorts. I was kind of like incest because the big shorts only like uh, all very old people wear. And they're like hanging out. Now, now I get used to it. And now I wouldn't wear the banana hammock, even my life depended on it. Well, but I mean, so you, ki- you kind of did when you re enlisted on the Kennedy. Oh, but the, I, well, but yeah, you were on purpose looking for the smallest fish. Well, you could no, no, Tucker actually, he took the biggest. They were, remember, there were only two pairs. No, uh, yeah. Brad had one, his own, just one pair. Yeah. The other one, we tried to scrunch from somebody on the courier because we wanted to do this traditional UDT oh, uh, yeah. ceremony, right? So UDT shorts, that mandatory. So this 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 bastard got the bigger, big, bigger shorts, and you can see him on the picture there, too. Uh, yeah, I have that one picture, of them, too. One of them. You know, I saw that's <clears throat> speaking of comments online, I saw that picture. And I'll I'll post it too. But they said because uh, you're getting reenlisted by Jocko, and they yeah. and, and and someone said, "Why are your shorts so small?" And somebody commented with, "Oh, they don't make those in Drago size," <laughs> <laughs> which I thought is a great answer. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I beat myself into it because otherwise I would have to forfeit that ceremony. So no, I you should... had to do it. had to do it, man. That's those are good pictures. That was a great deployment. But hey, let's get back to Memphis. Yeah, so this banana hammock didn't work out very well. <laughs> Push your children to the bushes to another place, named me to another, gave me big short, big like big shorts. I was wearing, and uh, and then they brought the kids back, and then I enjoyed the the, the swimming. Uh, but I was still like, what's wrong with my banana hammock? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and again, there's a language barrier. I don't know what I'm doing, yeah, but I obviously offended some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't explain it to them. I just like. Just nodding my head and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and then, I mean, because you're obviously just getting immersed into English. Does that what I mean, does it 
does it slowly just start to make sense or, or are you reading all the time or how's that work? Slowly. Uh, uh, so when I got the job, or even before that, I, when I got this dictionary yeah, and uh, I decided to go start, try to read something. So I started, I couldn't read the book because I could understand a thing, but I got the cartoons. And that's how I started learning. Oh, and I think I paid the price now for that now, even because it is easier to learn the first and correct way than try to fix what you learned the wrong way. But anyway, that's what happened to me. So I was reading cartoons that Jane loved Jack. Jack <laughs> loved Jane. I could make a sense out of that, you know, I see the pictures too as well. So I was a janitor uh, in the church. So I was like uh, in, in the school. So I was mopping floors, cleaning toilets, and I was in the haven. I was like, I have my own job. I can pay for my apartment because they, they got me a job and they also find me a, found me an apartment in Memphis. And we can we, we will talk about this in a second. But uh, sure. that was, um, so when I had this job, I was so excited. I, I can buy my own food. I can pay for my apartment. I'm very happy. No, and, and this is when I say I, I also understood that to progress in society, I do have to speak English. Mm -hmm. So I did uh, have a always, always dictionary or at least the written words when I wanted to learn the day. So I would try to use at least 10 words each working day. So 10 words I wrote in, how to, like, in English, how to pronounce it and what it means in Polish. And I was just mapping, mapping, and, and try to remember. If I forgot, I used my back pocket. Oh, three means three. It is how you pronounce it. Okay. And then keep back to mapping and cleaning. This is how I learned, uh, uh, start learning English. Eventually, start watching TV, which I initially I didn't understand that thing. Right. But then watching singular, single phrases. And I remember like, the question, like sometimes I like, hear in the film, I got it, I got it. So I'm just like, Hey, uh, what does it mean? I got it. I got it. I got it. What's that? You know, I was like, no, dude, that's not this. That means I got it. I have it. So, I, so I, this is how I learned. And eventually I became enough proficient to start speaking better. I could understand what is being uh, said to me and I could answer uh, fairly correctly, properly uh, to the questions. So that's how uh, that was my start. And while I did that, they were already looking for a better job for me and the, the, pl the place in the when I was janitor, the, I was asked by the church if I'm ready to go maybe advance for a different job. I say absolutely yes, but I was scared. That was pretty scary for me. I just, but I started feeling comfortable being janitor, you know? So it's like, I know what to do. I know how to do it. Right. But, but I also understood that my future is in getting better English, better job and advancing in the society. That's so, awesome. so, so they, I got my first job was in Memphis in Oak Lake, Easy Ford. There was a Ford dealership on Poplar Avenue. I don't know if it's still there, but this is where I started my job as a parts helper. So what was expected from me was answer the phones. And they already told the suppliers that when they talk to me, speak slowly and say number. So they say, I need 4455XE78. So I just wrote it down. Then I ran upstairs, wherever the parts were. I looked through the shelves. I found the part. I brought it downstairs. And then the truck show up from that. Whoever needed it, picked the part up and drove back to the wherever they needed it. Well, that didn't work out too well for me either because, uh, you know, I'm, my English was getting better, but it was not, still not good enough. So sometimes I pull out. The yeah, that's a tough job. That's a tough way to get immersed again in English. Yeah, and then you know I answered the phone and I hear you, motherfucker. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's like okay. I am so sorry. <laughs> I but, yeah, my English isn't so good, but I know what motherfucker means. So I'm pretty sure I called that priest <laughs> with the cookies the same thing. <laughs> so they let me. Uh, they they knew how hard I was working. They just didn't want to go and just kick me out. They said very hard. Do you? Do you know anything about European cars? You came from Europe, so can you work as a mechanic on European cars? I was like, yeah. you knew how to do that? I, oh, I didn't even own the car. I never seen the car. I never <laughs> even know anybody who owned the car. My father had one, but you know, he he was he, he was a communist, and he was he was he was he was not like my father. Yeah. So so no, nah, but of course I said, yeah, yeah, I want to learn. Okay, so there is a, a dealership, uh, Porsche. Audi and Saab uh, on 
down the street on Poplar Avenue. So we'll go for interview. Maybe you can just even get a better job. And that time it was like, like six dollars per hour. I say, damn, I'm the richest person in the world. <laughs> so so they uh they uh, I went to interview the the first Porsche mechanic show up. I think Daryl, his name was. He looked at me and said, okay. Uh, no, not really. I, I, I need somebody who actually can communicate better. So yeah. he left. Then show up the Audi mechanic, pretty much the same thing. And then we're waiting for sub mechanic. And you can hear the big motorcycle pulling in. There's like huge Harley Davidson with no pipes on it or anything. He walks in. This, that dude, fuck, he looked like a Yeti. He, when he walked up, it was like seven, seems like seven foot tall. <laughs> he looked at me and say, okay, so this is the guy. I couldn't even ask. I didn't, under, I didn't catch it, what he said. They say, "Yeah, it's him. That that's him." So, okay, uh, I need a slave. Sign him up. You want to be sub mechanic? So he said quickly. So these guys, do you want to be sub mechanic? I was like, yes. So yes, they, I do. <laughs> so that he's like, okay, I need a slave. Send him. I will. I need a slave. Wow. Yeah. And I was, but you know what? This hey. guy. I owe him so much. His name is James Moore. He told me everything. This guy could look at the car and he would tell you what's wrong with the car. He was excellent mechanic. So I got one of the best of the best in the trade to teach me. But he was also kind of like a hoodlum too. He was, a, they call him motorcycle gangster. But wow. you know, for me, that guy was lifesaver. And I cannot overstate how important was that that period for me where he took me under his wings. He told me everything about cars. I became a really good mechanic and uh, very respected in community. And uh, that was uh, where, uh, yeah, that's James Moore. Uh, if you're there, if you listen to it, Jimbo, um, I remember. Thank you. That and is, even, that is so was, cool. Uh, oh, man, it's incredible. So he decided to like, well, if you're my slave, you just need to come here. There's going to be another mechanic. My girlfriend will, my girlfriend, you know, there will be another mechanic and my girlfriend and the barbecue. We're going to make barbecue. I was like, barbecue. I knew from the chairs that they had barbecues that you go and make some meats and stuff. I never went. I went to swimming pool party, but it was pretty much, I went to the swimming pool party in the church. But after that, my banana hammock incident, that was the <laughs> last party I went to church. So uh, was, I was invited to, but, um, but then, he invited me to this. So I remember this is the first time uh, when I walk up there to his house, that was his girlfriend, his, uh, uh, this other mechanic. And I look at this meats and there's like slabs of steak. Oh, yeah. And dude, uh, in, in Poland, I, I, I would have to wait a whole month. There would, be, there would be portion for a whole month for me to eat. And the, in the way we eat in Poland was taking like almost like a razor blade thin slices of meat if we had it if we had it yeah if you had meat yeah bread. so it was more for the taste of the bread and if you have a butter and let's little slice right. of sausage or steak we didn't have a steak but it was just like any meat we were like this is such an awesome meal today you know but here it's like so i'm asking how many people are going to eat that steak who's coming who else is coming he's like no dude it's just it's just me and my girlfriend and and the other guy, uh, I forgot his name. I say, wow. So who? We been in the steaks? <laughs> yeah, that one is yours. Unless you want a different one. I was like, no, I never even tried to eat that big steak like that in my life, dude. I ate this thing. I, I was so amazed. You can you could go buy yourself a meat as much. Oh, in Poland you couldn't buy much more meat no. because the the, the the food stamps like the cards, the Russian cards. If you try to buy more. Then there was only a Russian card. You actually could go to prison for that. And there were people sentenced to prison by either falsifying these cards or just, just doing all kinds of tricks to buy more meat or more food or sugar. So here you can go and buy as much food as you want and you can buy meat and you don't have to wait in line. Just go pick it up. I was and, you're, and you're not going to jail for having extra that you're going from potential jail street fights over bread to straight up Memphis barbecue. And that is I mean, I hope people are paying attention to, the, to that, that uh, if we get meat and then the realization that over here, you can get as much meat as you want. And again, take it for granted. That's uh, that's insanity. You know, and this is something that I, I remember first time it was even before this, before I started to work. 
uh, American people took me to a grocery store and said, okay, they gave me the basket and say, we'll just go after you, you pig, what you like, we'll, we will tell you what it is. <laughs> well, I can understand, what, didn't understand a lot of what they say, but I can uh -huh. do what they want. So I was walking back and it happened, I worked in the cereal uh, aisle. Yeah. And say, oh, wow, what's this? And I say, you eat this. I had no idea what it is, but the box looks so pretty, so awesome. I say, if this is such a good bar looking box, I'm sure we'll eat if it's, because it is edible. So I just throw this thing in. <laughs> <laughs> but then I walk to the next one and say, what? Well, this is a better picture. The box, look even, box looks even better. Let me change this one. I remember I ended up with a full basket of cereal. <laughs> I, I, try, I wanted to you didn't try even it. get out of the cereal aisle. The, the damn cereal. shopping cart's full. Yeah. Just because yeah. the boxes were pretty, it's got to be delicious, right? Yeah. Well, I was eating this for a whole week until the next <laughs> And that was that was awesome. You know, you could, I was amazed at the, the abundance of everything. And you can go and buy it. You know, it's like, yeah. you have to be, but now I understand, you know, you cannot just go and spend all your money of uh, oh, entire aisle of cereal, but, you know, you, you can go, you can buy whatever you like to eat. You can, you are free man. There is no nothing telling you that if you buy more meat or if you try to buy more meat, we're going to put you in jail. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, yeah. And it's, and again, you said in abundance, it's not in abundance, it's how much I want. And that's, I mean, that's freedom right there. That's, and I, I, I just, the, the, the box is pretty. That's, that's just cool. <laughs> that's that's how I look at it at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so impressed. And uh, and I, oh, there was another thing too. Like my learning curve was pretty pretty high. Um, in Poland, if you go to want to go and like look at the uh, uh, stores on their uh, what they have to offer, you know, like you go to downtown and you go look in these windows and they are um, tape recorders, they are cameras. This all this cool stuff, tape players, uh, books. So in, in Poland, it's all in the downtown, in the buildings. But here, I figure out, I'm going to see what America has from these technologies, for the, the cameras, the, the, the tape players, the maybe cars and motorcycles. I want to see that. I just didn't know how to do it. So I, like, I did, like I did in Poland, I put the flip-flops on because it was hot. Shorts, this time the big shorts, no banana hammock on that one. And <laughs> started walking downtown. Well, I I didn't know that, you know, from suburbs to downtown, you don't walk. You either take a bus, or which I didn't have the money for, or you take a car and drive. So you know, I was cutting corners, cutting the across the highways, jumping the barriers. So people, you're, are, what are you what are you driving? I was not driving anything. I was just walking in the flip flops. Oh, okay. Um, you're, you're just walking. Yeah, I was just walking because like, I didn't <laughs> to drive. I just came to America. Yeah, so, I was just jumping, just jump on the highway. And... Yeah, but nobody at that time nobody told me that that these things I was seeking, they are in on the mall in the malls. You, you mm -hmm. go to the mall and the, you watch all these nice clothes. You know everything is there. People meet there. They can eat there. But for me, I was like. Where it is, it's got to be downtown. So I'm going to I see those big buildings on the horizon miles yeah. away. So I'm walking. So you're walking there. <laughs> I'm walking there in flip flops. And, <laughs> and you know what? And this is another thing which people here in America really don't pay attention about uh, too much. They just do it because it is the right thing to do because they are good people. But as I walk, there were cars constantly stopping. And is everything okay? I didn't understand well what to say. I was like, right, yeah. Uh, no English is okay. Like, yeah, <laughs> you want to ride? No, okay. So they were just <laughs> constantly they, they, they were stopping they, and asking. That's yeah, that's yeah, that's they thought that something happened to me and they wanted to help me. And yeah, because someone's walking, there's got to be something wrong. Yeah, and I was, I was so surprised in Poland, they would just flip you off. And I would, at that <laughs> point, it's, it's different now. Poland is free, free of socialism, but at that time. Yeah. Uh, socialist regime, you even look at somebody too long. Oh, you, God forbid, you smile to somebody. I was like, what the fuck are you smiling at me? Really? What, just smiling? What, what, are you laughing at me? And I was like, oh, what you staring at? What are you watching at me for? What are you looking at me? So that was usually, but you walk, you don't look people in the eyes, you just walk around, do about your business. And and here, when I came to America, it was like people, hi, you know, hello. And matter of fact, this is so funny. Uh, not too long time ago, a friend of mine from a Polish Special Forces group came to visit me. 
So uh, he said, like, you know, I'm going to go for a run for a couple of miles here. Where can I run? So here and here. He came back, like, Drago, people were saying hi to me. They were waving. They were, just, they were so nice. And even on the street, there is a sign. Be careful. Children are playing in the neighborhood. This is, I can't believe this. In Poland, they would just kick children to the curb. They would tell children not to play. There are signs, no playing with the... Oh, no, no playing, play. no playing signs. But here, there's like, if you just be careful when you drive, children are playing the signs. He actually, when I was uh, driving him back to the airport, back to Poland, he requested we stop by that sign. He can take a picture of it. No kidding. It yeah. But it, it, again, in Poland, it's very similar right now. Poland is free country. But at that time... It was just like I was so surprised. People were so nice, smiling to me, waving, some and saying, "You know, how are you?" I was like, "This is, this is weird." But then, then when I, you're first there, yeah. The what first what did uh, did you did you walk all the way to the mall? Oh yeah. no, no, not to the mall. I walked to the downtown, and I realized I started walking. I see some restaurants. I see like nice people in business suits walking around sometimes. But there was nothing there. It was like tall gray building. Yeah. Out of them, those high risers, but there's like really nothing to look at, They're like what I was looking for, you know. So then I'm walking back, flip flop, flip flop, same <laughs> jumping the highways, jumping, you know, like interstate. It's like, well, I just go down the bank, just wait for the cars that didn't go, just and run, then run, <laughs> run in the flip flop, run to the other side, just climb the bank, and then keep walking. <laughs> So, uh, because there were some bridges that were like not even the sidewalk for people to walk. So yeah. just like stick out around the cars, you know, just like to like time myself. Like if there is no car, I just like run very quick through this. So, and that, that was my, you know, uh, welcome to America. This is how I started learning. And then uh, the more I learned, the more I fascinated, the more impressed became, the more I became fascinated with America. And uh, yeah, you know, nowadays, like, uh, um, I, all these things that were given to me and provided to me by Americans, I never forget that. This is, you yeah. know, this no, is what I, I can, can say. I can hear it. And this is, that happens because America is built, was built on personal freedom and goodness of good people doing good things. So I hear, I see here often in America, people do these good things and they don't think twice about it. It's like nothing happened. It's like nothing. Well, I, I uh, a couple of times I even asked. A few times I had to ask, like, why are you so nice? I mean, this is something that you know you went out of your way to help this person. Like, uh, this is the way we are. You know, this I don't see nothing unusual about it. I don't know why you noticed that, because like here nobody we don't pay attention to it. We do what is yeah. not. Nice. What is the right thing to do to help our neighbor, to help our friends, to help people who need help? And uh, and we don't dwell on it. And people here don't. They don't think about this. It's very transparent to Americans. It is not transparent to people coming from outside and see, holy smoke, are these people are saints here. And this is this is something that, that, that the character of America that I was always impressed. And I hope we will never lose that. I want to be like this. I hope I am like this. And I hope I am. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to do my best to, to be good America. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Just uh, the little things from cereal boxes to a, a month's ration of meat at one Memphis barbecue. The way Americans treat each other, how they're nice with each other, they'll, they'll help each other out. It's just it's so awesome to hear that experience from the outside, looking in and then coming in and being part of the family. And, and, and Drago just does a does a great job every single day of uh, we have a saying that says earn your trident every day. I think Drago earns the American flag every day and it's just it's humbling to hear it. Um, going from Poland, coming to the United States through New York and Memphis and then uh, joining the military, but learning how to skydive and because of skydiving you'll find out which branch he gets into and we're going to talk about SEAL training next and um, we'll get into that in the next episode. That's where you learn the hard way about never quit. And if you never quit, you're never out of the fight.